tonight, a special event, Ianla Fix My Life, times 300, single women, all saying they want the same thing. You done been left, you have been broken. Can Ianla fix their broken love lives? What is this? My this, journey. This is not a journey, boo. This is a safari. Perpetually single, damaged self-esteems, failing relationships. But What's gonna... really going wrong? What is it that you do not want a man to know about you? Can Ianla turn these 300 women around once and for all? Plus, in backstage, the surprise no one saw coming. <laughs> Next. Life happens to everybody, even me. Life didn't care that I had written a bunch of books, traveled the world speaking, married the love of my life, lived in my dream home, and made a bunch of money. And then life left me broke and feeling broken. The only way to get back was to do the work. I did my work and put my life back together piece by piece. I am Ianla Van Zandt, and I am here to help you do your work. I'm here at Harpo Studios in Chicago because tonight's episode of Ianla Fix My Life is happening right in there. Tonight's show touches every single woman that you know. So we fill the studio with hundreds of them because they've all got the same problem. What's their issue? They want to find and keep a man. They want to fix their love life. So grab your single girlfriend and come on. We've got some work to do. This is going to be our hardcore relationship workshop. These 300 single women have come from across the country. It's time they face the truth about what has kept them single. So tonight we are here because all of these women, 300 women, I mean 301 single women, all want to find that one special somebody to live with, to learn, to love with, to have that loving, lasting relationship with. And we're having trouble doing it, yeah? Yes. You know, and it's all their fault, isn't it? Yes. Because yes. everywhere I go, I hear from single women all the time. I can't find a man. There are no men out there. All the good ones are taken. So we're here tonight. We're going to take a look at the things that we do, because it's all about you, boo. All about you. I know we really want to blame it on them, but it's all about you. We've got to look at what we bring to the table when it comes to relationships. Because to be in a true, lasting, loving relationship, it's going to bring up everything unloving in you. The deeper you fall in love, the more unloving you will behave. Ooh. All right, so y'all ready to tell some truth? Yeah. Because the truth will what? Set you free. Will what? Well, what? And who wants to be free? All right. Now that we are all in agreement, these women need to start speaking their truth out loud. So I want you to reach under your chair, and you're going to see a board and a pen. Here's what I want you to write down. What do you think stands in the way of you finding the love you want? That, that, that one guy, that one relationship. So, so here's how you're going to write it. What gets in my way is blank. Fill in the blank. What gets in my way is what? Let me see what you're writing. Finding that one love that you want, that final, fulfilling relationship. What gets in my way is the way that I, the fact that I, how I stand up. Here she go. Hold it up so we can see. What gets in her way is the fact that she overanalyzes. Is she by herself? Raise your hand, raise your hand. Hold it up so we can see. Okay, what gets in the way is the fact that, hold it right to your bosom, right there, because I wanted to frame your face so that you're clear about what you do. How does that look, though? I mean, if, like, if he doesn't call me soon enough after a date, then I think, oh, he just isn't interested when maybe he's busy or whatever. Or I think if he doesn't say something that I want him to say on the date, like if he doesn't compliment me enough, then I'm analyzing everything and it's making me crazy and then I appear insecure, which I'm not, but it looks that well, way. Well, sure you crazy. are. If you overanalyze, you are <laughs> insecure. Could you own that? I'll hey, own it. I'll just, well, let me hear you. I have some insecurities I that have, get in the way. I have several insecurities. That get in the way? Yes. All right, there you go. See, we got to get to the truth. Give her some love. Oh my gosh. 
Here's the deal. We got to look at the truth of who we are. We got to look at it. We have to see it. We have to feel it. We have to deal with it and heal it. Feel, deal, heal. What you write? Come on, stand up. Let me see. Tell me. What gets in the way is that I'm not direct with what I want. I play out a story. Whoa, who doesn't ask for what they want and then get pissed off when they don't get it? High pissosity. <laughs> Thinking that he's supposed to know. Men can't read minds. They barely read labels. <laughs> now, what is this about the laziness? What gets in my way is laziness. <laughs> what that mean? Stand up. You're lazy. What does that mean, you're lazy? Yeah, stand um, up, boo. I don't make it a priority, I guess. I am... Too busy? Yes, I'm very busy. Okay. That's not lazy, then. See, well, you're saying lazy when you're busy. What kind of truth is that? Well, I know, but I don't prioritize. Like, I don't make it... I sit on my couch on a Saturday Do night. Do you want to be in a relationship? Yes. Why? Well, because... Mm. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> I'm going to offer you some limiting beliefs and fears. If you've ever thought this to yourself, if you've ever said it to your girlfriend, if you've ever heard a girlfriend say it to you, if you think it when you're in the bathtub on a Saturday night, being lazy, wondering why you don't have no date, I want you to stand up, all right? All the good ones are taken. Ever had that thought? Stand up. Men don't want to commit. Ever had that thought? Stand up. I can't trust men. Ever had that thought? Stand up. I'm just going to get my heart broken anyway, so why bother? Stand up if you heard it. I don't need a man. I can take care of myself. Uh-huh. Yeah, mm-hmm. So, do you understand that those thoughts in the back of your mind and how strong they are and how many times you think them is what shows up in your world? If you can't trust men, you're going to draw men that can't be trusted. So let's take a look at a little tape I got from Huntsville, Alabama. Hi, Ayanla. My name is Kim, and I'm a news anchor here in Alabama. I have a very comfortable lifestyle, and I have no baggage. I also don't have anyone to share my life with. I think what happens with me is I get to a certain point, and I just can't move further in the relationship. I think I get scared. I think anybody who knows me knows that I've always said I want to get married one time and one time only. That's it. But I can't even get to that point because my fear is paralyzing me. Here's Kim baggage free. She don't have no baggage. Let me feel your pulse. Because <laughs> if you don't have no baggage, you don't have no pulse. You said, um, I get to a certain place and I get scared. Scared of what? Scared of making the wrong decision. Uh-huh. Who don't want to be wrong? Who doesn't want? Raise your hand. Good. Have you been wrong before? I've definitely been wrong So before. get over it. You were wrong and you survived. Get over it. Right. Be willing to be wrong and know that whatever the consequences is, you'll survive. Because you done been left. Kim, in your letter, this was very interesting to me. You said, I don't need a man to take care of me and to buy me things. What's wrong with needing a man? I think it was the way I was raised. I was raised to be strong and independent and self-sufficient. And I was told that that's the kind of woman that men want. Yeah, but you can be strong, independent, and self-sufficient and still need a man. I need a man. I need a man. <laughs> you, but I want a man. And, I, and that was the no, difference. No, 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 no. You see, anything that keeps you self-sufficient and self-reliant is going to move you away from your desire to be partnered. So if you're saying I'm self-sufficient and I'm self-reliant and I don't need a man, that is incongruent with I want a partner. Say, I don't need a man. Say that. I don't need a man. I don't need a man. Okay. Now take your finger, this finger right here, and say F7. F7. Delete. <laughs> delete. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to stop saying that. Stop it. But we do that. As women, we do that. We set up all the criteria and the reasons why we don't need them, don't want them, all these preconceived notions, and then wonder why they can't get in. If I could tell you today what you need to do to begin to attract 
masculine energy into your life, men into your life. Would you do it? I would. You sure? I'm absolutely oh, sure. OK, Dean, bring me my goodies. Because see, you have one challenge and one challenge only, my beloved, as an accomplished, independent woman with no baggage. <laughs> you don't know how to be vulnerable. When you think of being vulnerable, what do you think of? Being weak. Weak, and what else? Um, in no control. You got to be vulnerable. Because when we are vulnerable, we are available, we are accessible, we are soft. So what I want you to do today to be vulnerable, I want you to take all your makeup off and put your hair in a ponytail. All right. <laughs> all of it. Yeah. yeah. You know, because we wear a mask. And this keeps us safe and in control. If you really want to be with somebody, let them see you from the inside. So now you're taking off your public persona and becoming vulnerable. How does that feel? It actually feels free. Yeah. How many of us would be willing to do this? Just walk around, clear. I'm not talking about the people that don't have no makeup on now. <laughs> It's not about the makeup. It's about the vulnerability. I want you to see your beautiful self. Do you know her? I mean, do you know her? Yeah. Because this is who he's going to see in the morning. This is where he, who he's going to see when the babies are born. And you want him to know this you. And this you is sacred for you and him. Yeah? I think if you give off that air that you don't need him, he can't show up. Yeah? Right. This binder is filled with 126 dating profiles that have been rejected by one woman. We're off the road and inside Harpo Studios for tonight's special Young Love Fix My Life. 300 single women from all around the country have come to Chicago for one purpose, to find out why they can't find or keep a man. They have no idea that 50 single men are backstage watching all of this go down. But they're going to find out soon. Ooh, it's going to be good. We're here in my workshop to fix whatever's broken that keeps us from having the love that we want. But we can't fix what's broken until we become willing to do the work. Now, you see this binder? This is a binder. You see this? Yes. This binder is filled with 126 dating profiles that have been rejected by one woman seated in this audience, 125. Cheryl, stand up. <laughs> 125 out of the 126 men asked you out for a second date. That means she went out with 126. And 125 were interested. 126 of the men in this binder are evidence of what doesn't work for you. Is that accurate? Because you got requirements. She got requirements. Tall. I would like him to be as tall as I am when I'm in heels, if possible, but at least taller than I am. And when I'm kissing somebody, I don't want to go down. I want to come up. Like it's, it's gonna be he has to be financially secure. What does that mean? My income or better. Your and, income or better. And like an equal financially. Some people represent potential. Potential <laughs> means you ain't doing nothing now. OK. So this is what you don't want. But you have these profiles. You have these. Right. This didn't work. Right. And yet you hold on to what doesn't work. What is this? It's my this, journey. No, because you're my still. My journey. This is, this is not a journey, boo. <laughs> OK. This is a safari. <laughs> Into the wild. <laughs> okay. Here's what we did. 
because it pains me to see my sister doing the same thing over and over and it's not working. So we threw away all of her deal breakers. We just threw them away and we sent her out on three dates with guys that she would have never chosen, never, because they weren't younger than her or tall enough or wealthy enough or whatever. Here's what happened. Let's just take a look. I am terminally single. Admittedly, I'm picky. But I think I'm really just looking for an equal. I typically don't date anyone less than like 6'1". Um, yeah, I'm looking for someone that lives close to the city, somebody that is financially stable and ambitious, adventurous. I'd say most of the men that I date are you know, 35 to 43-ish and a lot of traders, brokers, businessmen. I want somebody special. I don't want to settle. Oh, very nice. So what does a guy do on a first date that kills it? Just give me the basics. Dutch pay. That's a pet peeve of mine. Who does that? A lot of people do, yeah. and, and, and very wealthy people do. All right, older or younger men? Younger. Younger? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I don't even know your age. Yes, but let me strike a youthful pose, OK? okay? okay. No, I'm kidding. This is all I've got. No. This is it? I was going to guess 44. Just slightly older. I've been looking for that for a while. 47? Do you want to excuse me for a second? Please. If you eat everything, I'm going to know when I get back. I'm saving it all for you. <laughs> so it feels too old for me. So if I had to say right now, I don't know that I would go out with him again. What a gentleman, though. I mean, he is classy. He probably hit every category I would usually be looking for. It's just like I have a life full of first dates and so few experiences of people that I would like to go on a second date with. Cheryl, very nice, nice to, to meet you. you. How are you? Good. How do you generally meet guys? I'm almost 100% online. OK. There's so much misrepresentation out there, right? Yeah, the last relationship I had, he lied by 10 years. Get out of here. 10 years. Yeah, it should have been a red flag. Do you, do you feel like you're a good listener? I can be. It depends on how interested I am. <laughs> <laughs> Honest answer. <laughs> Honest bad. answer. Really, really cool. Really cool guy. Um, I think I'm taller than he is, and uh, I, I wish it didn't have to matter. Like for me, I guess I call it the kiss factor. Usually within like 30 seconds, I'm gonna know if I'm ever gonna kiss the person or not. Daniel? Hi, I'm Daniel. <laughs> nice Hi. to meet you. Oh God! You have done this before. Like you would shoot. This is really nerve-wracking. <laughs> He's handsome. He seems nice. I'm kind of excited. I didn't know what to expect. So how old are you? 31. Ooh. How old are you? <laughs> 42. I'll be 32 in a month. Oh, then that's only a decade. Yeah. He is completely different than my usual downtown <laughs> business guy. I would say that he has the kiss factor, for sure. Mm -hmm. Cheryl seems to find reason after reason for why a man isn't the one. But I think what's holding her back are her own beliefs and fears about relationships. So I, I want to I want to offer you something because I have some ideas about this. I, I just need some help, Dean. I need your help again. I need your help. So Dean, I want you to stand here. Make believe this is the man of your dreams. Everything that you want. He's got the money. He's the right age, and and y'all are coming together. Now I want you to bring to your mind. I want you to say out loud the five major beliefs or thoughts or feelings that you have about men. When you, when you meet them, what are, what are the things that pop into your mind that are wrong with them or might not be right with them? What are they? Number one. Does he know how to be faithful? Take a step back. Number two. Am I enough? Step back. Number three. Look at him. This is the man of your dreams. Are you capable of loving? Step back. Number four. When I need you, will you run away? Step back, number five. <laughs> Can you love me how I hope to be loved? Yeah. This is the man of your dreams. 
look where you are based on what you think that has nothing to do with him. Those thoughts have nothing to do with him. But you know what they have to do with? Your fear of intimacy. Because intimacy means into me see. And the closer you get, the more he's going to see about you. What got you here, beloved, has nothing to do with him. Nothing. He's there, ready, waiting. But you've got so much criteria that blocks the intimacy till you may not even be able to see him. Are you just willing to be wrong? Yes. About what makes a perfect guy? Yes. Okay, take a step forward. Are you willing to reveal your secrets and tell the other person what you don't want them to know about you? Yes. Okay, take a step forward. See, we're doing better already. <laughs> yeah? Are you willing? to be open, to be disappointed, and have your heart broken. Yes, I do okay. often. All right, here you go. <laughs> now look how close you are. Mm -hmm. Just by being willing to do something different. You can have all the criteria and standards in the world, but what you draw to you is what you are. If you're not abundant in love, in self-esteem, in self-respect, and self-worth in here, you're not gonna draw somebody that's the same way. What is it that you do not want a man to know about you? Hello? <laughs> I just sucked the air out the room. <laughs>
for you, Venus yes. and for you. Leanne, here's a question that I want you to ask. You know, and, and really your ability to tell the truth here is, is going to determine your freedom. So I want everybody, flip your board over. Answer this question. What is it that you do not want a man to know about you? Hello? <laughs> I just sucked the air out the room. <laughs> The insecurities, the secrets, the things that you don't want him to know. Come on, write that down. What are the things that you do not want a man to know? The fear of being heard or being rejected, that you don't really trust him. You may not even like him. You just want something to do on Friday night. What are the things you don't want him to know that you mask up and cover up? We all do it. Come on now. OK, Venus, what did, what did you write? Uh, that I'm too codependent. Not I'm too codependent, that yeah. I'm codependent. That I am codependent. And what, tell me what that means for you. What does that mean? Just that wanting to be in that ideal relationship and, and have him there all the time or being too needy. I don't want them to see that that's what I really want. So then why don't you ask for it? Yes. What's on your list? Body image, insecurities. Um, You've got a lot of pain about that, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So, and if he steps into that, my beloved, if he steps into that pain, your insecurity about your body image, what are you asking him to do? It's not going to be good. Well, I'm you're asking, asking him, him to, to fill a hole that color. only you can fill. Yeah. Who's got a daddy hole? Who's got a, stand up if you got a daddy hole. <laughs> crisis among women, crisis among women, that we are continually looking for somebody to be our daddy. You, you understand? Dean, bring me a mic. You can't sit down now. <laughs> Let me go right here. Y'all sit. You stay right there. Come. Come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Everybody breathe. Why are you crying? Tell me why you're crying. Tell me what that is. Because it hurts that, what he, hurts that he wasn't there. That your dad wasn't there. Yes. Everybody got to hurt because daddy wasn't there. Stand up. Stand up. Come on, get to your feet. Stand in your truth. Your daddy wasn't there, and you got that hurt, that ache. Stand in your truth. So say this with me. I forgive my father forgive for not being the man I needed him to be. I forgive myself for believing that I'm less than because my daddy wasn't there. That's your work, ladies. That's your work. Can you hear me? That's your work. Let's take a breath. If you think that you're sexy and you know that you're beautiful, we have no choice but to feel it. We are here in Chicago with 300 single women from across the country have filled Harpo Studios for a very special Iyamla Fix My Life. They are all here for one reason, to find out how to have the love life they've always wanted. I've asked 50 single men to join us backstage and watch it all go down. The women have no idea. Okay. Now we're getting to the good stuff. We're getting to the new awarenesses, yeah. stuff coming up. So now here's the number one question we all want to ask men, all right? What is their number one turn on outside of the bedroom? Outside of the bedroom, right? And these 50 single men stepped up to answer these questions. I think that's, that's wonderful. So you want to know their answer, right? Yes. Do you, you sure? Yes. OK. I could tell you, or. <laughs> you could ask them yourself. Yeah. Thank you. Thank
around is a good thing. Wow. So, so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for being here. So you heard the question. What is your number one turn on? I, I can't even think. Give me that. Gee, <laughs> whoo. Work with a sister, why don't ya? <laughs> your number one turn on outside of the bedroom. Come, come to me, darling. Oh, <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Whoa. You see how he just jumped over that bench? <laughs> was, was that the best bench jumping you ever oh, seen in your life? I love you. OK, so what is, what is it, the turn, number one turn off outside of the bedroom? I love a woman's eyes. eyes. I, 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 and I, you know, listening you know, a little bit, I think you can read a lot into the eyes. When you look, you can, you can really uh, you can see the truth. You can see, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about, my brother. All right. All right. So what's your number one? Number one turn on outside of the bedroom. Stand up. We want you are a specimen that we want. Yeah. Go ahead, put it back over there. <laughs> yeah, number I, one turn on outside of the bedroom. I would say it's, uh, it's a big heart. You know, you see evidence of that with good friendships, good family relationships. You know, seriously, wow. uh, you know, who's, who's got a big heart here? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so let me ask you a question. You, they've been backstage watching the entire time. So you've seen it from the beginning, right? Remember Kim? Yeah. Who has something they... Does anybody have anything they'd like to say to come, beloved? Uh... <laughs> what would you say to Kim, my beloved? Kim, I heard you back there. I would say outside the bedroom. Confidence. Think about it, we like confidence. Their turn on outside of the bedroom is? Confidence. Confidence, <laughs> confidence is something that we all must have. And I think sometimes we lose ourselves in someone else. And I would say to you, love yourself. Don't give yourself up if you can't love who you are. Thank you, my darling. to their feet for you. Oh. One of the things that caught our attention was, once you took the makeup off, a lot of us said, she's, she's beautiful with or without it. And I think if you had... <laughs> I, I think if you think that you're sexy and you know that you're beautiful, we have no choice but to feel it. Say it. If you, if you put it out there, we are going to feel it. You bring to you what you feel. I love, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I got a question I want to ask you because you're here. Why don't y'all ever call when you say you're going to call? Let me. <laughs> question I want to ask you because you're here. Why don't y'all ever call when you say you're going to call? Let me, <laughs> let me ask that in a more loving and compassionate way. Here's a question we all want to know. We all want to know this question. Why don't y'all ever call when you say you're going to call? Why don't? Most times it's because we're not interested. If that's the clue. So say that. Interested. Why don't you say we're that? Not. Why don't you say that? Tell the truth. The truth will set us free. Because. OK, because most, most men do not want to face that reality and say that to the woman. They'd rather just not call and hope she gets the hint. Well, you know what? Love us, respect us enough to know we can handle your truth. Right. Respect us enough. Somebody said, what's a nice way? Come, 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 come to me. We need a mic. He needs a mic. Well, what I feel my cougar coming out. <laughs> Try to work with her, but she, she can only take so much. She can only take so much. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. 
Sometimes guys don't call because they're scared of rejection back. Throw it out there. This is information! Are you guys, do you all have a fear of rejection? Absolutely. Really? Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. thank you. That's good to know. That's good to know. What else, thank you. What else do we want to know from them? Okay, we got a question over here. You can go back. Okay. Thank you, darling. <laughs> we got a question. We got a question. Wait a minute, let me get you a mic. Didn't get her a mic. If a girl's showing you that, you're, that she's interested, and yet you have a fear of rejection, I don't okay. get that. Okay, all right. You know what? This is wonderful. This is classic. Thank you, relationship angel, for this powerful demonstration of the stuff we do. Now, wait a minute. Let me, let me break it down for you. He offered you his experience, his truth. And we challenged it. We questioned it. And not only questioned it, but questioned it with our attitude. <laughs> One of the things we have to do is we have to believe that what they tell us is the truth as they know it in the moment. Doesn't mean it can't change. <laughs> Are you clear that that's what you did? They have a fear of rejection. So sometimes they don't call because of their fear of rejection. That means it doesn't matter what you show him. He's got a fear of being rejected. Go ahead, go ahead. Stand up, stand up, stand up. I would flip that one. I would say that some men would hold back and call him because they want to be chased. They feel a woman giving them attention makes them feel good. OK. So. Are there any of y'all up there? Any of the chase me men up there? Oh, there was one. He raised his hand. <laughs> Stand up. Stand up. Come on. Wait Sorry, a minute. Buddy. Now, are there, are there any women out here that like to chase? Come on. Stand up if you like to chase. <laughs> <laughs> Chase, tell me about that. What is the appropriate me. chasing etiquette? Call me. Call you. Yeah. All right, call him. Right. Now, let me just say something. Let me just say something. Uh, because I need to give information, OK? That's not chase energy. That's fight energy. <laughs> we got to be careful with this. OK. And this. Yeah. And this. <laughs> because when you see this gentleman, what do you know? Right. Sure. Right. Sure. Right. Sure. All right, all right. I want to hear from this gentleman. I heard Bye. a long time ago, um, when you love a man more than he loves you, or treat him as such, then he's not going to give you much back. As a man, I want to want you more. I want it, like I said, Chase, I don't want a woman who, you, you're all over me. That's my job as a man. Granted, we do like some form of chase, but not chase. We don't want chase. That's called thirsty. That's what we call it in the neighborhood. <laughs> There's no man in this room that actually wants a thirsty woman. We don't want you to chase. Okay. We don't want you. We, we, we like to give affection, and we see that it's noticed, and you enjoy it back. We really find enjoyment in that as well. Let me ask you a question, gentlemen. Do you like when we tell you that we appreciate you? Yes. 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 Do you like when we affirm you even when you have weaknesses? Yes. 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 And do you like when we acknowledge the good that you do? Yes. Ladies, triple A. <laughs> Affirmation, acknowledgement, and appreciation. Follow triple A. It'll pick you up when your relationship breaks down. some hard work I want you to do. Hard work, not homework, not deep work, hard work, hard work. The work that we need to open our hearts to create what we want, not only in relationships, but in every area of our lives. So when you leave here today, and you people at home also, I hope you wrote down on your board, I hope you did the things that you needed to do. But when you leave here today, for the next seven days, ladies, for the next seven days, 
I want you to speak to every man you see. I want you to <laughs> smile at him and speak to him. Now, now, if he's with a woman, don't do that. <laughs> Not if he's with a woman, but just smile at him and speak to him with no expectation. Because so very often, we bring so many expectations into the space till there's no place for him to be. So smile at him, speak to him. If he follows you, give him your number. If he doesn't, it's okay. Know that you've already been rejected, you've already been hurt, you've already been left, and you survive, you will continue to do that. But in the meantime, Stay in peace and not in pieces. Yeah.